Welcome to Driver Guitars. My name's Chris. Behind the camera, it's Matt. As always, and today, just wait for it, folks. This is the last episode of actual sawdust construction on the guitar. So it's a big deal. Insert. <laughs> this is the last episode, yay, of construction. Boo. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, the only, the only thing that we're gonna have to do after this episode is we're gonna put some, uh, put an inlay in it and put some frets on it and then it's going into the paint booth. So basically, this is the last of the big ones. And what are we gonna do today? Today, we're gonna be slotting the headstock. If you're doing a guitar at home, if you're following along with this video series to build yourself a guitar and you're not doing a slotted headstock, you don't even have to do this step, so that's very exciting for you. But we're doing a slotted headstock on this guitar, and we do that mostly by hand, and we're gonna use this acrylic template that I made years and years ago, um, a router and a couple of hand tools, and make it nice and simple and easy, uh, so that if you wanna do a slotted headstock, you can follow along and make it nice and easy for yourself. And you kinda do, right? I mean, uh, listen. All right, yeah, start to find the comment section, let's <laughs> yeah. go. I've heard, I've heard your rationale on it, and I'm, yes. I'm team, slotted headstock, yes. but I understand why pe some people aren't. This is on me. I've kind of gotten away from talking about the why in this video series, since basically since we've bent the sides. Like, we haven't really gotten into why I do certain things. So I do just want to take a split second to say the why I do a slotted headstock. It's not just visual. This is very similar to the controversial conversation about unslotted bridge pins. Slotted headstocks was something that all guitars were done with. And it wasn't until looking, Mass production. At, <laughs> looking at Martin again, it's not their fault, it makes so much sense. They realized that if we don't do a slotted headstock, if we just drill six holes in the headstock and do a different style of tuning machine, that it saves what you'll see in this episode, this entire step. It just drill six holes and be done with it. But when you do a slotted headstock, what ends up happening is the strings come across the neck, over the nut, and then they go down into the headstock so you get even more of a break angle than you would just by the angle of the headstock which on my guitars is 15 degrees is about the average but you're probably closer to a 20 to 22 degree angle by doing a slotted headstock so and like we always talk about what makes an acoustic guitar sound good is a whole bunch of really small things done better and if we get a better break angle across the nut we get more pressure on the nut and it's just that much more of a solid termination point from the nut to the saddle and it does help with sustain there's going to be keyboard jockeys who tell me that i'm stupid and i don't know but once again they probably just buy their guitars at guitar center so what do they know uh <laughs> shots fired shots fired <laughs> yeah. uh, so <laughs> please send please send all strongly worded emails to chris at i don't care dot <laughs> exactly or to will thompson <laughs> <Yeah>. music <laughs> <laughs> slotted headstock what we're going to need to do is obviously put our slots in the headstock on the front side but before we do that what you want to do is to drill your tuning machine holes on the side. So uh, the tuning machine, obviously on a slotted headstock, they're mounted to the side of the headstock and, and not to the back of the headstock. So what we're gonna do is use this really awesome jig that I got from Stumac, I think LMI. Also, as of the time of the recording of this video, I do wanna uh, send my condolences to the people who work at LMI. Uh, LMI is no longer gonna be with us, it looks like, for much longer, just a few more months. Don't buy all the glue yet, because I need to get my, <laughs> I need to buy some glue. Um, but they've been around since the beginning of me building guitars, um, and we've talked about them a lot on here. So I do wanna encourage you guys, if there are some things that you need to buy them from LMI, here over the course of the next month or two, help those guys out as they close down their business and get this some extra funding. But I think that they also sell some of these slotting jigs as well. But this thing is awesome. What it does is it kind of takes all the guesswork out of me drilling the holes in the side of my headstock. Um, I'll find a center point and then I just lock this down on it. And then I also have these really awesome drill guides that allow me to be able to drill these holes nice and perpendicular to the side. It just takes all of the guesswork out of it and just makes it nice and simple and repeatable. It's not a cheap tool. If you're doing a one-off guitar, don't, you know, take, take your time and do it without the jig. But if you're gonna do more than a few with slotted headstocks, get yourself one of these. They also sell these really awesome jigs. This particular one is for electric guitar, the six in line tuning machines. And somewhere around here, I have the one that does the three on three, which you would need for a standard acoustic guitar. These things are worth their weight in gold. Drilling holes in a headstock for tuning machines is one of those things that people kind of, they've built this awesome guitar and then it's time to drill the tuning machine holes. And it's really easy to think that it's simple and mindless and you can totally screw up your headstock. You can screw up how well the tuning machines fit. I did it on my first several guitars. You will probably do it on your first several guitars. So I do recommend that you spend a little bit of money, if you're, even if you're doing a solid headstock and get yourself one of these cheaper jigs. The slotted head ones are a little bit more expensive. It will save you some frustration. What we're gonna do 
is drill those side holes first. And the reason we do the side holes first on these instead of doing the slot first is because if we don't drill these holes right now, we go ahead and cut our slot out of these two places. When I go to drill the holes here, we're gonna get blowout on the inside of the slot. So this is a way of preventing that blowout and you get a really crisp line in there. So that's why we drill the holes. But this little jig that I made, um, you can make one of these out of just about anything. I just had some um, half inch acrylic. What I have done is I have, you'll see this mark that I put right here. <laughs> it's the only tip that we have that's also bulletproof. Exactly. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I made this on the CNC machine um, years ago, but my first one I made by hand long before I had a CNC machine. Um, a jig is a jig, right? Uh, but what I have done is you'll see there's a little mark right here and that mark is exactly in the middle of the slot. Not in the middle of the entire headstock, but in the middle of the slot. That's an important um, thing to remember. So what I can do now is I can set this on top of here and it's going to be a perfect fit for what size my headstock is. And without, see, I didn't, I didn't remember everything. I was bragging to Matt that I remembered everything, but I forgot a pencil. <laughs> he had to run his mouth. <laughs> now that we have our pencil, I can set on here and just kind of hold this in place and I can mark right there on my halfway point. We're just going to transfer that line. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I also forgot a 90 degree angle. We're going to take that line and we're just going to transfer it down. Same thing on this side, transfer it down. Awesome. So you'll see that line seems like super off centered, right? It seems like mm -hmm. it's way this way. That's why I'm saying that you want to make sure that your center line is in the center of the slots, not in the center of the headstock or you'll screw this up. So the next thing that I like to do is uh, I'm going to do this knot in the vise just so that Matt can see a little bit better is we're going to set our jig on here and that's going to be the center of my middle hole. So I use this, which comes with the jig. It's like a, um, a metal dowel, but it's also got a point on it. What I like to do is to set this on here. I close it up kind of. I'm gonna push down on it very lightly while closing up this part. Slide it just a little bit. And very lightly, you can you guys probably can't see it. I'll draw it in. There we go, we've drawn a little line right there. So that spot now is my center spot. I'm gonna go ahead and push on it, which is now, it's got a little dent that this will fall into. So then what I can do, set this back on here very lightly push down on this until it clicks and it'll fall into that spot ah, makes sense right yeah it's locked into place so now with this in place i can then come over to my vise and i'm going to check and make sure that nothing's shifting obviously we want to make sure that we get this nice and accurate i'm going to slide it again just so i can confirm there we go put that in my vise and we'll be ready to drill it at that point. And I'm confirming that it is smack in the center here. It looks really nice, looks really good. Um, so then we're gonna take a quarter inch drill bit um, and we're gonna drill these holes out nice and nice and easy. And the goal with the drill bit, when you drill these is we wanna go basically a little bit past the center point of the headstock. So that's the maximum depth that you wanna go. If you go too far, because remember the headstock is angled very slightly, if you go too far, they're gonna end up going through each other in the middle of the headstock internally. Uh, not the end of the world, but I prefer for them to like basically get close but not touch. And the hardest one to do that on is the lower one because your headstock's the narrowest, obviously, at the lower one. So something to think about, what you can do is you can take your drill bit and you can, you know, measure to the headstock and wrap a piece of tape around it so that you get yourself a nice stop uh, and do it that way. Uh, but just something to think about. Don't just go all, all crazy drilling without thinking. That's the end takeaway of this whole video. Don't drill without thinking. <laughs> I like to drill a little bit, pull out a little bit so you can evacuate some of the wood chips. That way you get yourself a really nice clean hole here. You can't see it, but I have a little tiny, almost invisible um, Sharpie mark on this drill bit that's telling me where to stop. <laughs> and then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. That easy. Okay, we have our six holes drilled. Uh, nice right down the center. That jig guarantees that it's smack down the center in this direction. We know that we've got it centered on the center of what will be our slot. Same thing on this side. Uh, neither one of these blew through, but I do, I can see just, you're not going to get it on camera. I have the tiniest little bit of light shining through where the Brad Point bit on that lower one where they both just kissed each other. So that's like exactly what we want. Um, so what we need to do now that we have those done, we're going to do the slots. Um, 
So using the jig that I have, we're going to continue on uh, showcasing our double-sided tape method that we have uh, so that we can do this. Um, gosh, if you're not going to use one of these acrylic templates to do one on yours, I honestly, I, <laughs> I have the hardest time trying to think of how you could go about doing this. I think the way that I used to do it before I had a jig, and I don't recommend it, make a jig if you have one, is I used to drill a half inch holes, uh, four of them, so it was the beginning and the end of each slot, and then I would very carefully, I do remember this now, <laughs> I would very carefully like use a jigsaw to cut those and connect the dots, you know, be, be narrow, and then <laughs> use a file. I'd put this thing in my vise, and I'd very carefully use a file to get the, the edges of my slots right where they needed to be. Inevitably, it's going to be all kinds of wavy. You're not going to get it perfectly square inside there. It's just, it's just, it's designed to fail at that, <laughs> that point. So make yourself a little bit of a jig. You can get little pieces of half inch acrylic like this on Amazon for super cheap. Um, you don't need a giant sheet of it. Anyway, I'm going to double sided tape this to here using our masking tape and super glue methods you've seen over and over again on this. Um, pretty self explanatory though. Main thing is we just need to make sure that it's perfectly centered. There's nothing else really to explain besides that. We interrupt this programming to tell you guys a little bit about some of the products that we sell. One of them being this awesome paint handle. For those of you that are maybe respraying a guitar or following along with one of our builds uh, and you're looking, how can I hold my guitar while I spray it? We have the solution. Check these guys out. We have them in a link down below as well as our fret caddies that we've started selling. And these are awesome for refrets or just general guitar maintenance. You put your loose frets inside of here, your bridge pins here, uh, and any sort of metallic hardware that you have inside of there just to help keep your workbench organized. So check those out. We do have links down below and we'll ship them today. All right. Look at that. Look at that beauty. We've got our, um, our acrylic template using the double-sided tape technique. It's not going anywhere. Nice and good. It's perfectly flush with the sides, but most importantly, I've got that center line on the jig lined up perfectly with the center line on the holes that we just drilled. So I'm going to put this in our vise, and we are going to use a flush cut bit and get ourselves to the point where it is uh, absolutely perfect. I think I'll mount it like this. So... Um, Lots of different router bit options you can use here. Uh, I have, I'm gonna end up using two. I have, I don't even know if we can see it. Let's show them. I'm gonna use this one, which doesn't go the full depth of the headstock. So it's gonna get us part of the way there. It'll get us started. And then I have this second one. I honestly can't remember where I bought these. These might be still Mac. I don't know. But they've got these different um, little pieces of like a vinyl tubing on it. So I can kind of move them around and change where that ball bearing rides, depending on how deep of a slot that I need to make. It's, it's a little Jankosaurus, but it, it's, it's worked well for me for years. I've never had any, uh, any major issues with it whatsoever. So what we'll do is we'll set this guy. This is a good, Matt can see it nicely from where he's at, but we can set this so that it just gets us started. I'm obviously not gonna try to take out a giant chunk of it right out of the gate. Um, we'll just kind of get ourselves a little, a little bit of a nibble to get us going. Something, something like that, that's probably, you know, sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, Are you getting it, Matt? Uh, no, I am. Yeah. Yeah, that's about how deep we'll do on our first cut. You don't want to just like anything that you're routing. Um, you don't want to go for the full the full gusto. You don't even want to go for the half of the gusto on the first pass. Ready? Yeah. All right, you can see down here, Matt. Hopefully, show you guys what we've got started. Looks super cool, and we've just gotten into um, those holes that we drilled inside. And you can see how they're gonna be nice and clean. Um, but I wanted to have Matt show you that because that's about how deep we've gone on this first one. Um, and we're just gonna nibble away at that, and I'll do the same thing on this side. But just to give you guys a quick reminder, when you go to start your router, if you're following along at this at home, is that you're gonna start it up like this, and we're slowly gonna drop it in with it turned on, and then guide it in, and then bring it back till we clear out the whole thing turn the router off, wait till it quits spinning before you lift it up out of the spot. I say all this because all it takes is just this, the bare end blade of this router to hit the edge of this template and it goes kuk, 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 and just chatters like crazy, messes up the headstock or messes up your template. Just take your time, think everything you do needs to be intentional. Um, so we're gonna do that and then um, continue lowering our router bit until we punch through on the backside. Okay, I think what, Matt, with like three or four, probably four passes? Yeah. Got us down the road there, but we should be able to pull this guy off now, maybe. <laughs> and uh, I can show you guys what it looks like. There we go. 
Here it comes. There it is. <laughs> cool. I'm holding the head sock in my hand. <laughs> that looks pretty good, right? Yeah. And most importantly, we've got good clean, you can see here, good clean holes coming through the other side. Mm -hmm. A little bit of like, I don't even know if it's picking up on camera, a little bit of uh, just some slight tear outs on the inside of here. And this is pretty typical too, especially on maple, a little bit of burning inside this lower section here. And just probably burning up inside here, but we're gonna clean all that out and make it look really good. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do and the last step that we need to do to finish this all up besides getting in here with some sandpaper and making it look really, really pretty is we need to do some ramps in this area. In order for the string to come across the nut and to go down inside the slot here, if we don't have ramps, what ends up happening is it gets in the way. You can, like if this is representing the straight edge of the string, it doesn't have any room to get down, especially on the two E strings. So we actually have to put a ramp down in this area. Used to do it for years um, with a little um, a round file by hand and I would just like <laughs> Then Matt and I went to Atlanta uh, for a, well, this was a Chris Thiele concert, wasn't it? And that was a Julian no, Lodge. Julian Lodge, yeah. We went to go see Julian Lodge. Went to um, uh, Highland Woodworks and found these. These these are all over the internet, it's like on Rockler and stuff, but these things are freaking awesome. They're rotary files but we have a coarse, a medium, and a fine. And this one doubles as a medieval um, torture device, if, <laughs> if that's something you're into. Uh, what I find that I like is this medium one. Um, these are diamond coated, so they'll just rip through this wood nice and easy. And then I actually switch over to a traditional rotary file so we can get a nice clean look on it. I just do this inside of a drill bit, and I'll show you how I go about doing that. The first thing that I recommend that you do is get yourself some tape and put it over here on the fretboard. Um, so that you can protect it from getting damaged by the drill if you do end up kind of slipping or missing. Cheap insurance. This binding tape works the best because it's the thickest and the strongest. Using our handy dandy drill. I like to get this, I kind of get on here like this so I can hold the drill nice and steady and I just slowly work my bit down into here. Um, we're going to take this ramp and we want to make sure that we stay even with, or I guess parallel with the, the slot itself and it's gonna come and come to about right there, uh, this terrible drawing, but you'll see what we're gonna do here. <laughs> um, once again, uh, a coarse one, if you wanted to or you don't have them, you could use these more traditional rotary files. These work really well, they just take a little bit longer. You could also do this, like I said, if you just have a, a round rat tail file, you could do that and, and do it by hand, but watch how quick this goes. That's how quick that goes. Obviously we still have a lot to go, but that roughed it in really nice and quick for us. Um, just to kind of give you guys some mechanical pointers, I like to be right here so that I can make sure that I'm keeping my drill perfectly parallel with the angle that the um, that the slot is in. Um, due to the very nature of the, the bit spinning, I'm, I'm spinning it in a clockwise position. It's gonna wanna pull in this direction. So I do have to apply just a little bit of pressure in the opposite direction to keep it from wanting to do that. Um, the big risk is that it wants to start bucking and if it bucks, you can either rip up your headstock overlay or you can actually widen by accident your slot. So those are just the things to think about. Take your time, think about how you're standing, get yourself in a nice position to do it. I'm gonna switch over just so I can show you guys how we do this one because it's obviously the same thing on the other side. From this medium, over to this fine one. The thing about the fine one, for at least for me, is that it's basically the exact width. It's a half inch. It's the exact width of my slot. So I have to be very, very careful with this so that I don't, as I come in and come into the slot itself, that I don't accidentally widen the fret slot or the um, uh, the, the slot in the headstock. So we're gonna take this and let this fall nice and nicely into the slot that we went ahead and made with the other file. Very light pressure at first so we don't get chatter. You see how it's just slowly going into it? I'm not forcing it because if you force it, it's gonna chatter. And that's basically it. Yeah, there's a little bit of some marks in there, but we can take that down with some sandpaper. What I like to do at this point is I actually take, um, let me move this just a little bit. It take the uh, quarter inch dowel that I used to line everything up with. You could use a quarter inch drill bit. I stick it in. That's gonna represent my tuning machine. 
And then I take a straight edge and I set it so that it touches the top of that. And I simulate kind of where the nut's going to go. And I just make sure that I can connect that dot to the top of where the nut's going to go to show that the string's not going to accidentally bang into this area because that's the point of the whole thing. Um, that's really, really close. So I'm probably going to come down just a little bit more with my rotary file just to get it to where we want to. Um, but yeah, I think you get the idea, right? There you go. That's looking really nice. Um, what I love about this is that it gives you a contrasting look as well. You, you bring in, obviously you have your headstock overlay. When you do your ramps, it brings in the color of whatever wood you're using for the neck and it just looks really nice. And then on top of it with our guitars, we do the um, carbon fiber slot, uh, reinforcements on the headstock uh, and along the whole neck. And when you do the slots, it reveals just a little bit of that carbon fiber. Um, and it's really cool to be able to point to that, you know, when the guitar is completely finished and you can see that, oh, I see, you can see the carbon fiber enforcements and it looks really cool. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side and uh, I'll show you guys what the finished look looks like. Let me pull the tape off and we'll show you what it looks like. Super, super cool. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, obviously, it's got some fuzzies here and there and those burn marks still in the wood. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that basically gets the job done. Um, for those of you that are screaming at the top of your lungs to your keyboard about all of, like the little issues that are still on this or even on the guitar body where there's like, you know, sanding marks or this or that, like I'm not going to waste my time doing all that right now because we're going to spend a full day right before it goes in the paint booth just getting everything super, super dialed. Uh, a little piece of, I recommend you do the same thing. Don't waste a bunch of time now. Wait till you get to the end. That came out super good. I'm really happy with it. I hope it all made sense to you. I do understand that slot heads are not something that most people do, but uh, I want to encourage you to try it if it's something that you haven't done. A lot of what we did here also will apply to a solid headstock in the sense of being very, very careful, using jigs and really taking your time just because it seems simple. Drilling holes can be very hard to do in a really highly accurate way. So take your time and do it. Um, yeah, man, we'll put links to all the tools we used in this video. And in the next one, we're going to get started on the inlay on this guitar. And let me tell you, Will has big plans for the inlay and it's going to be uh, quite involved, but we're excited to take you guys on that journey. Uh, and make sure you guys like, and subscribe, check out all the items that we sell on our website that help make you guys' guitar building experience a little bit easier. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.